Hello everyone and welcome back to the Thermodynamics 2 tutorials with Maria. We're going to be solving another problem for a simple Rankine cycle. We are told to consider a simple Rankine cycle with the following operating conditions, which are listed here. We are first asked to calculate the power output, and then we are told to assume a cooling water entering at 10 degrees Celsius and leaving at 17 degrees Celsius, which is used to condensate the steam in the condenser, and knowing this, we are asked to calculate the mass flow rate. We are also given the CP of cooling water. Here we can see that we already have our simple Rankine cycle. We have liquid entering the pump, where it's going to get compressed. It's going to go from the low to the high pressure. It's going to get the f compressed fluid. It's going to get heated up in the boiler here to one where we're going to have a phase change. So we, here we can see we are in the superheated phase. And then the steam is going to enter the turbine. It's going to get expanded into two. And then the steam is going to enter the condenser and be converted back into liquid in state three. We are giving a condenser exit temperature of 45 degrees. So that means at T3, that's going to be equal to 45 degrees Celsius. The boiler exit pressure, so P1 is going to be equal to 3 MPa, and also we are giving a maximal temperature of 600 degrees Celsius. So that means at the exit of the boiler, we can see here in the TS diagram, and we are also giving the mass flow rate. The power output is given by the following equations, the mass flow rate times the work of the turbine minus the work of the pump. We have the mass flow rate and we need to get the work of the turbine and the pump. Let's start with the work of the turbine. We know that the work of the turbine can be calculated for, from the difference of the enthalpy, so H1 minus H2. And we can see that in state one, we have the pressure and the temperature. So that is easy because by having these two, we can go to the A6 table to find the H1 and S1. So for H1, we have 3,682.8 kilojoule per kilogram, and S1 equal to 7.5103 kilojoule per kilogram. Now for state two, we don't have much, but we do have the temperature at three, and we can see that temperature two is equal to temperature three equals to 45 degrees Celsius. However, here we don't know what it's gonna be. So we need to calculate the quality. So the quality of state two is gonna be equal to S1 minus SF over SFJ, and these values are going to be are going to be obtained from the table A A4 at 45 degrees Celsius, and we're going to have S1 7.5103 minus SF, which is 0 0.6386 over. 7.5247. That is going to give us a quality as state 2 of 0 0.913. We, by having the quality, we can find the enthalpy at 2 using the values of the table. And this is going to be equal to 180. 188.44 plus the quality that we just obtained times 2,394. That is going to be equal to an enthalpy at 2 of 2,374.16 kilojoule per kilogram. So now that we have H1 and H2, we can go ahead and calculate the work of the turbine. That is going to be equal to 3,682.8 minus 
2374.16, which is going to be equal to 1300, 1308.64. Now that we have the work of the turbine, we're going to get calculate the work of the pump. The work of the pump is equal to the specific volume times the pressure change. So we can see here the high pressure P4 minus P3. At 3, we know that we have a saturated liquid since it is exiting the condenser. So we have a saturated liquid and we know it's a 45 degrees Celsius since it was given to us. From the tables, we can obtain the pressure 3 equals to 9.5953 kilopascal. We can have the specific volume of 0 0.00101 meters cubed per kilogram and an entropy at 3 equals to 188.44 kilojoule per kilogram. We have the specific volume, we have the pressure at 3. At 4, we don't have, but we do know that P4 is equal to P1. And therefore, it's going to be equal to 3 MPA, MPA or 3,000 kilopascal. So now we can obtain the work of the pump, so it's going to be equals to 0 0.00101 times 3000 minus 9.5953, which is going to give us a work of the pump of 3.02 kilojoule per kilogram. Now we can go back to our power output equation. And we just need to plug in the numbers. So this is 302 kilojoule per kilogram. The mass flow rate it's given, which is 40 kilograms per second. And that is gonna give us a work output, 52,224.8 kilo joule per second because our kilograms are going to cancel out and this is equal to 52.2 megawatt. Now that we completed the first part of the question, we're going to jump onto the second part and in order to do that we need to go back into the equation of the condenser. So the heat rate of the condenser is going to be equal to the mass flow rate of the steam times QC. We know that the heat of the condenser can be found from the change in entropy, so H3 minus H2. And also, this is going to be equal to the mass flow rate of the water times the Cp of water times the delta T of water. What we are asked in the second part is to find the mass flow rate of the water. If we rearrange the equation, we're going to have the mass flow rate of the steam times the change in entropy over Cp water times delta t. If we just plug in the numbers, we're going to have a mass flow rate of the steam of 40 kilograms per second times H3, which is equal to 188.44 minus 2374.16. This is all kilojoule per kilogram. We can see that here already our kilograms are going to cancel out. And now we have the CP of water, which is 4.18 kilojoule per kilogram per Kelvin. So here we see that our kilojoules are going to cancel. And the delta T, we know is going to be 17 minus 10 degrees Celsius. But we need to convert it into Kelvin. So we're going to add 273. That, that is going to be Kelvin. And then our kelvins are going to cancel out, and we're going to have kilograms per second. And that is going to give us a mass flow rate of the water of 71.71 .71 kilogram per second. And this is how we find the mass flow rate of the water in the condenser.